right? A lot of this course, um, a lot of the ease of this course is if you guys well manage your time. A lot of the stress from this course comes from when you guys don't manage your time well. And so today, the exercise we're going to do that you're going to turn into me next week is your first stab at trying to do a very rigorous schedule for you. So I want to run you guys through uh, just an example here to show you what this template is. And then you guys are going to take this, you guys are going to fill this out and upload it to our Google Drive um, for next week. Now it's hard to make a rigorous schedule because you know we're all different. Some of us are doing um, you know school groups and some of us are doing stuff out of the islands and some are doing you know all these various things. But in general, uh, this is uh, suggestions that I have for you. And again, note the schedule is not for this semester. The schedule is for the whole rest of the year. The first thing to say is that the schedule comes from uh, the deadlines we have at the end of next semester. So that is the very, the last day of of classes in May, or the last day of, when we have our finals, you guys will give me your th written thesis. The dates aren't in yet, but roughly the week beforehand, you guys will have produced a poster. And so the poster, we have to have that done about at least two weeks beforehand, et cetera. So, so we're pushing back from these dates. So the big picture, the big picture, before we get into talking about the schedule, the big picture is um, you should be done with your data analysis by spring break. Again, there might be some exceptions here and there. Somebody's studying the, the flowering of a plant and maybe the plant hasn't flowered. But by and large, most of you guys, 99% of you guys, should be done with your data collection come spring break. That's the first thing. The other thing is to talk about the value of winter break for you guys, right? So Christmas break, really, really helpful. So you're gonna be working, working, working. You're gonna take a little bit of time off you know, Christmas time, holiday seasons, New Year's, that little, that week or so there, and that's great. You guys should relax, breathe, sleep, do all that kind of important stuff. But after New Year's, before school starts up, you have about, you know, three weeks or so, two and a half weeks or so. Use that time, right? Use that time really valuable. You should be planning now that that's going to be a, a, a major push for me in terms of my capstone. So when your buds are saying, what up, dude? We're gonna go ski over, you know, in January, you have to say, oh, you're gonna have so much fun, right? Enjoy that, right? <laughs> so, so start planning now for that, right? And start planning now. The thing about the planning is you're the, you're the one that's gonna, I mean, I'll eventually know, but really, you're the one that's gonna know. Right? So you're going to generate this calendar and you're the one that's going to know if you're sticking to your plan or if you're missing your deadlines or what have you. So uh, right before I show you the example, I'll just say that um, the other thing I want to disabuse you guys of is this notion of science as a linear process. Right? We've talked a little bit about this, but it really, really matters in terms of our scheduling. Do not expect to collect data, 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 and then analyze data, analyze data, analyze data, analyze data, and then write up your data. You know, in the movies, that's how it works. And in some crazy weird places like molecular biology labs, they don't really do real science, um, that works that way, right? When somebody's just plug and play and, and going one more step forward, right? You guys, virtually every single project you guys are doing, nobody has done before. There is no playbook. There is no guidebook. You're not just sucking one new you know, gene cutter and throwing that in the pipeline. You are figuring out how to do this stuff. So it's much harder. Right? It really is. It's a much more challenging way to do science. Much more fun, much more insightful, but nevertheless, in, in, at this stage, it can, be, it can be a challenge. We're not sure what to do. But let me uh, point out to you what I want you guys to be doing, though, is Get a little bit of data, get a little bit more data, do some at least cursory analysis. Then get some more data, do a little bit more analysis, a little more data, right? I'm not talking necessarily hardcore statistical testing necessarily, but what's the pattern that you're seeing? Is the level going up? Are we seeing more trees in this valley, more trees in that valley, right? Sort of the, the summary <laughs> statistics level of analysis. 
So one, we just do have a tight timeline. That's, that's just the reality that we've inherited. So we, do, we can't doink around for another year after this and, and think, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? So therefore, this is one going to help you. So as you're thinking about this stuff, as you're out collecting that data, you can be your head in your head. Hmm, I wonder if this pattern is going on. I wonder if this relationship is, is going on, right? So it'll help you be thinking about that. The purist might say you shouldn't do that because that's going to tend to bias. That's going to have you introduce some bias there. If I'm thinking that I'm going to see most of the change the day after the rain, the rain event happens, maybe I'm going to oversample that or something. And, and those kinds of biases, there are a concern. We want to be objective. We want to not, not overly bias stuff. But again, given our time constraints, as long as you guys are mature, we can, we can handle that. You, you, won't, you won't overly bias yourself if you're acknowledging that, that I, 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 that's a concern. Much more beneficial for you to be doing this, looking at the data throughout. Because what happens if the third time you look at the data, oh my gosh, it looks like when the sun comes up, the bird's flushing distance de declines. Oh geez, I just noticed I didn't know to my data sheet if the sun was up or not, right? So by, by looking at these patterns and trends, you maybe could figure out a couple things that you might want to add to your data collection that won't necessarily change your whole design, won't necessarily take another week of being out in the field, but maybe just you know another couple notes, another, another measurement. Wow, that might really help you when it comes to your analysis, right? So again, it's an iterative thing. It's get some data, take a glance at what the data say. Get some more data, take a glance at what the data say. Get some more data, take a glance at what the data say, as opposed to data, 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 analysis, analysis, analysis. Cool? All right, so let's have a look at this. So this, um, this figure here is um, all the days from basically this week on. Uh, and so we're going through. We have a couple days that are, that are you know, obviously no classes, or a couple weeks, excuse me, where we don't have classes. Everybody should be, tr uh, again, there will be some exceptions because of phenology of plants or whatever, but, but generally speaking, you guys should be trying to get at least some of your preliminary data starting in the next few weeks, right? Go ahead and try to collect it like you really would collect it. There's both what am I going to measure, but there's also the logistics of data collection. There's the logistics of processing the, the fish guts for microplastics. There's the logistics of going to the school and surveying the kids, whatever the case may be, right? So, so do, a, do a stab or two, but some of those early stabs should include really physically going to the site, you know, going through all the motions. That's gonna tell you, oh my gosh, I need to give myself two more hours that I, that I had thought, or, or whatever the, the case may be. So you're gonna go through and get some preliminary data. Maybe that preliminary data is gonna be good, and maybe you'll be able to use it, maybe it won't. Maybe you're gonna try something, ooh, I shouldn't have done it that way, I should do it this way. That's fine, that's all good. Again, as early as possible is the ideal thing for data collection, but, but certainly by the time um, winter break rolls around, Christmas break rolls around, you guys should be in, in data collection mode, right? So in this example, and so you guys, you guys have this, I emailed this to you, it's also on the Google Drive, but this is, uh, essentially a template and if you guys can't remember where the Google Drive thing is here's that folder where I want you to put it in but basically in this case uh, this example is uh, November the week of November uh, 13th this person is gonna go out and try to do some trial collection data you know try this and that okay then and then they're gonna try to do some real um, data collection right you know late December excuse me late November early December spring break then they're going to start the the break off with analyzing that chunk of data that they that initial chunk of data they go, okay that's cool and they're going to go back and collect some more data etc going going on forward so here's and so this is the generic form and you guys you guys can take this uh template and you guys can fill this in so you guys are going to fill in this part you guys are going to fill in this column and uh, you can adjust this just to give me a sense. This, this, this helps me just get it. If I don't fully understand what you're doing, this, this will give me a sense of what you're thinking. But here's an example from someone. In this case, this, is, this, is, uh, this guy's doing a GIS-based project. So in this particular uh, project, a lot of what needs to be done are, is, is the generation of maps. And so this person's, okay, uh, deadline, so on this, this week, I have to have maps one through three made. I have to have map four made. 
uh, by the week of November 6th, etc. And, and going around, going around, doing analysis and back and forth, right? Once you're done with this, and I have a quick look at it, um, you guys should use this as a reminder. You guys know best how to remind yourself. Maybe this is something you want to put in your calendar, in your, your calendar app. Maybe this is something you want to print up and put on your refrigerator or maybe your, your bathroom mirror or whatever. It's something you're going to look at a lot. And that's not to create stress for you, but that's to keep in mind that, oh my gosh, you got to keep going. So when you're checking in on Monday of whatever, the week, the week of November 13th, did I get that whatever task done? Right? And if not, then, then you know, oh my gosh, I got I to gotta change some stuff up. You should build into this schedule uh, at least a down week somewhere, right? You may well get a cold. You may well have your car break down. You may well have, you know, life intervene and mess us up. So we want to build a little, as much as we can. It's tight because it's, you know, we, have, we don't have a whole lot of time. But, but you want to at least build in a, a flub week so if something happens, you don't freak out and totally go off the deep end and think, oh my God, my life's over, right? So, so build, that, build that cushion uh, for unplanned, unforeseen life events uh, into your schedule. Cool?